okay let us begin yeah so we are proving the deduction theorem and we have already proved one side implication that was very easy yeah we are proving the back side so the purpose of deduction theorem is to allow transfer of formulas between left and right side with a single turnstile operator yeah it's a deduction operator proof operator so um, if there is a proof of s implies t from capital s then we also have a proof of t from s union singleton small s that part we have seen now we are looking at the converse so suppose you have a proof of t from s union singleton s so now that proof is a finite length proof so for that finite length proof for each line we are going to replace that line inductively of course by a finite number of lines so that the left hand side of the new proof always contains capital s as the left hand side yeah i mean so that's what we are going to do it will be only s and whenever we are replacing one line with something appropriate then at the end so if the line is let's say s uh, s union singleton s proves ti then at the end we always need s proves s implies ti yeah that's our goal now the first base case yeah i mean there are two base cases now how do you decide what is base case what is inductive case what could be the reasoning of an unfounded line like the the line which doesn't depend on anything previ previous it can either be a logical axiom or it can be a non logical axiom so that's how we determine what is a base case what could be line number 1 what could be the reason for line number 1 line numbers 1 and 2 always have to be las and nlas but line number 3 onwards they could have reason mp mode exponents so right now uh, we we already covered this base case 1 if the reasoning for line number i is s uh, s union uh, is la yeah so here actually uh, i should write here so by monotonicity and la we can conclude ti from capital s then this is la1 and from that by using mp we can get this now uh, let us consider base case 2 that line i has ti as the right hand side and the reason is nla now what could happen tell me uh, if the reason is nla then ti ti is in capital s or ti is is equal to small s yeah not in small s okay so now sub case 1 so ti belongs to s then here i am just going to write that proceed as above then s proves ti nla and proceed as above yeah there is nothing different happening you just change the reasoning of this line then la1 is still valid and mp is still valid okay so now base sub case 2 is more interesting sub case 2 that ti is equal to little s yeah i mean ti belongs to curly bracket singleton s so ti is equal to s so what do we want to prove tell me we want to prove that capital s proves s implies s how do we obtain that ti implies ti is s so uh, s implies t is tautology s implies t is tautology yes but it doesn't mean even if it is a tautology it doesn't mean that you already have a proof for it see we need to show uh we need the sequence 
S proves S implies Ti, but Ti is S. Okay, how do we obtain this? If you remember something from last lecture, so if I hide this part, then it is a tautology. Yeah, I mean S implies S is a tautology. So we have a proof of S implies S for every S. What is that called? We called it lemma 1. Right? So, yeah, so uh, we use monotonicity. Yeah, why do we need to use monotonicity? Because when we proved that, we did not have any left hand side. Left hand side was empty. Right? So, you can replace the left hand side by capital S. Uh, with lemma 1 to obtain this. So, lemma 1 gives you a 5 line proof of S implies S and then you simply use monotonicity so that you can replace the left hand side by capital S and you are done. Any questions so far? Let us proceed. So now we are done with all the base cases. So now we only need to show the inductive case. Okay. So for the inductive case, let us write it down. Suppose all lines with number numbers less than k have already been converted, have already been replaced by finite, um, I mean what, what word did we use? Finitely many lines, with finitely many lines. Okay, uh, by finitely many lines with capital S on the LHS. And the reason for line K is MP. Then line K is what? S union singleton S proves TK MP. Okay, but it has to be MP on some IJ. Right, so what would be line I? Then without loss of generality, Assume that line I is S union singleton S proves T I and line J is S union singleton S proves what? We cannot say T J. Yeah, I mean that is where we have to make a choice. I said without loss of generality. Either line I would be something implies something or line J would be something implies TK. Yeah, I mean one of them has to be something implies TK. Either TJ implies TK or TI implies TK. So, here we are going to say TI implies TK. So, by induction hypothesis, Since i and j are less than k, so yeah, uh, one more thing, look at the first line that I have written. What did I say? Suppose all lines with numbers less than k. So what kind of induction are we using? Strong, strong induction. Yeah, this is not weak induction. But anyway, strong and weak induction are equivalent. Okay. 
So by induction hypothesis, since i is i and j are less than k, in the new proof, we have sequence. What sequence do we have? We have sequence S proves S implies T i and S proves S implies T i implies T k. Yes, I mean the proof for the line proof for line i was replaced by finitely many lines. And the final one of those lines is S proves S implies T i and this is S proves S implies T i implies T k. Now tell me how to obtain a proof of S implies T k. MP. I cannot use MP on this. Can you see that? Distributivity, self distributive law. Okay. So, uh, add lines. So, S proves that S implies T i implies T k implies S implies T i implies S implies T k. And what is the reason for this line? LA2 and don't forget monotonicity. I mean LA2, yeah, I think L, for LAs we don't need to write monotonicity. We can just write LA2. Then S, now I can use MP. Yes, so the first M, First part of the implication is precisely given. So then S implies T i implies S implies T k. Yeah, the reason is M p on the previous two lines and then again, once again I can use M p because S implies T i, we already have a proof over here. So therefore, uh, sorry, literal S implies T k by using reason M p. Yeah? Are we done? We still need to argue since, since the last sequent in the proof of S had in the RHS by induction we have replaced it with a sequent S proves S implies T and thus we are done. Yeah, this last line is also equally important because what did we want to show? We wanted to show that capital S proves small s implies t and because that was the last line and because we have converted every single line, we have also converted the last line. So therefore, we have this sequence as we need and until then, everywhere the left hand side was capital S. So we have actually obtained a proof of little s implies t from capital S.